I want to talk to you today about overflow. We talk about working from a full cup, filling your cup before you try to pour into anyone else, right? And that analogy is a beautiful analogy. We've been using it for years. Women understand this because we pour. We are caregivers. We are nurturers. We're always pouring into others in whatever environment we're in, whether that's a marriage or a family or a job. This is what we do. We are nurturers, we are teachers, we are caregivers. So we constantly pour out. As a result of that, we can easily become depleted. We can easily become disappointed. We can easily become discouraged with life. And we neglect our own dreams and our own goals and our own desires because we value very often we value the children over ourselves right we value supporting the husband over ourselves we value being there for the family over ourselves this has a lot to do with society it has a lot to do even with christian culture right that encourages us to be sacrificial but I believe sacrifice is something that is situational and that's where wisdom comes in and we need to have the wisdom to know when we need to sacrifice and when we need to sustain ourselves, right? Because it is not God's will for you to give and give and give from a place where you don't have all right, this is why we need to operate in abundance. This is why we need overflow in the first place. It's not the giving that's the problem. It's not being there for others that's the problem. It's not the desire to help that's the problem. It's neglecting the woman within and not filling her up to the point of overflowing not having the relationship with God and the relationship with yourself that you need to have so that when you show up for others, you're able to pour and pour and pour to the extent that they need. And you absolutely can, but it takes work. It takes you attending to your own needs first. And this is why the Proverbs 31 woman rises while it is yet night to give meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. And if you notice, she has her household to take care of and she has maidens, she has help. She's not doing it by herself. She has people in place to support her. She has a system in place to support her. That's wisdom. It takes wisdom to set a system in place that supports the life that you are trying to have. That's how she could operate from that space and do all the amazing things that she's doing. And that's why her children are looking at her and saying, you are amazing. Her husband's looking at her and saying, you are amazing. I have everything that I need in a woman in you because she's taking care of herself her arms are strong for her tasks her arms are strong for her task why because she spent time strengthening herself it didn't just happen magically she's operating out of her overflow and here's the thing that stands in the way of overflow and if you see me looking down it's because i'm looking at my notes as women, we are created with the capacity to carry. We are created with the capacity to carry life in our womb. We are created to carry life in our words. We literally give life from our bodies and from our words, right? And we speak from what is within us, right? The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. We speak from what is in us. We are all seeking this place of overflow. And it sounds so good to have overflow, to have more than enough. The only way you can have overflow is if you have a consistent pour 
coming in. When you have a consistent pour coming in, you can have a consistent pour coming out. There will always be enough and your cup will always be full. I hope you're getting the analogy. See it with me. I am the cup. I am the cup and you can even say this within yourself. I am the cup. This is the pouring in on this side. This is the pouring in on this side. This is the pouring out on this side. The minute this pouring in stops, this pouring out means that you are pouring out of yourself. You're pouring out of who you are and that's when the resentment creeps in. That's when the what about me creeps in. That's when they can't, they see why I'm struggling so hard comes in. Because you're not allowing this pour. You have to allow this pour. You absolutely have to allow this pour to happen for this pour to happen. So take a minute and that cup that you have tilted over this way that you're trying to pour out, straighten it up. Straighten it up and let it sit for a minute. And let this pour happen. And when that trickle starts to happen, that trickle starts to happen on this side, let everyone else drink from that. And it's not selfish. You absolutely have to sustain yourself. It is important, it is essential that you pour into the lives of those that you serve. Women were created to be an attractive solution to the world. It is absolutely, <laughs> it is absolutely essential that you pour. I'm not editing that out. I'm not gonna edit these videos. It is what it is. I want it to be like we're having a conversation. I got over myself a long time ago. It is absolutely essential that you pour from a place of peace and a place of abundance. It is absolutely essential that you do that. The people you serve need to see you do that. You might think that they appreciate you more because they see you struggling, but what they see is that you don't think you're important enough to pour into yourself. And it's not that they don't care. And when I say they, I'm not being general. I'm not talking about everybody. I'm talking about the people who you feel don't appreciate you and the people who you feel don't stand up for you and the people that you feel are just taking and taking and taking. And you're saying, can't they see that I'm struggling? They can't see. They can't see because you're making it look like you're not. What people need to see, the people that you serve, they don't only need to see what you do for them, they also need to see what you do for yourself. Value yourself to make it obvious that you care for you, that you love you, that you value you. When you start to show up to yourself differently, you show up to God differently. And I know that sounds backwards. We're taught to come as you are and that is true, that is true. Don't get me wrong, but you have to come to yourself as you are. It also says in the Bible, let a man examine himself. We have the power to perform self-evaluation. And if we can perform self-evaluation, that means that we can perform self-affirmation. We can perform self-validation. Now, as created beings, our standard has to be the standard that God set. And that's something that you can only do in your private time with yourself and with God to determine who am I supposed to be? Who was I created to be? That's a personal thing. As a friend, as a coach, as a mother, as a wife, as a sister, 
that's not something I can tell someone else. I can only know that for myself. You can only know that for yourself. So this overflow, this sense of overflow, this feeling of overflow is not going to happen if the cup is full of junk. And I have a cup here. So let's say, I love this cup. Let's say you want to create overflow in your life, but there is, there is anger in your cup. The cup is you, remember, the cup is you. There is resentment in your cup. There is bitterness in your cup, right? There is unforgiveness in your cup. There is regret in your cup. So look, all these things are in your cup. So when you sit for that pour, you're not operating with full capacity. Because you have all this stuff in here. And this is why I say sitting with yourself. You sit with yourself in the presence of God. And that is the key. There is nothing wrong with sitting with yourself. There is nothing wrong with self-evaluation. But welcome the presence of God into your self-evaluation because what can happen is when you judge yourself by your own standards, your standards can be flawed, your standards can be tainted, and the standard that God has for you is the purest, most beautiful standard, and it's achievable because it's a standard that he helps you achieve. It's not something that he just throws you out into the world to accomplish all on your own. So those desires in your heart to do amazing things and to have a wonderful life, even for the, the luxuries that you want to have, these are things that God wants for us. But not if we're full of this. So it takes sitting with yourself to remove the anger, remove the resentment, remove the bitterness, remove the unforgiveness, remove the regret. This is what vulnerability looks like. It looks like emptiness and it can feel like emptiness. It can feel like nothing but this is the best position to be in. Because now when you get this pour, your cup is actually gonna be full and it's gonna be full with good things. When this pour starts to happen, the stuff that was settled in here, it starts to move around. The stuff that was all stuck on the sides like gunk, it starts to move around and it's, it's uncomfortable, it's not a good feeling. But what we can often do is we let that stuff, we let all that stuff sit in there and it, it sits like, like a sediment on the bottom and there's water in the cup and we just, we keep the cup steady like this and we don't stir the water. We don't stir that water because we want it to look like it's clear. So you look like it on look at it on the surface and you're like, oh yeah, it's clear. It's fine. But let some problems start stirring that cup. And what happens? The water starts to get muddy, right? Because those problems are stirring up what's in the water. So when you sit with your journal. This is why I encourage people to journal. This is why I ask the questions that I ask. It's to stir your cup. 
And this is what life feels like. You think that stirring the cup means putting a spoon in the cup and stirring the cup. No, the whole cup gets stirred. You ever feel like that? Like life is just rocking you back and forth and everything in you is just screaming like, stop. We have to create these moments because we're human. So even though we've created that space and we've done all this work to create this space where the cup is now empty and we pour and from the top to the bottom, you know when you go to a clean beach, like a clean, beautiful tropical beach and you put your feet in the water and you can see your water and it's clear. I grew up in Barbados, so I know what that's like it's a beautiful thing that's how you want your cup to be and that takes work that takes daily work because every single day is going to give you opportunities for anger for resentment for frustration for unforgiveness for regret every single day is going to give you an opportunity to accept those things and put them in your cup but guess what happens let's say your cup is full right and we should know this from from physics let's say your cup is full and you take this and you put it inside your cup what happens this is now going to displace some of what was in your cup and let's say that water is clean and it spills over and it spills over onto someone else but this is now still in the cup so what happens to the water in the cup the water in the cup is now tainted so the next time something happens, you haven't addressed this thing in your cup. The next time something happens, right? More water comes out. Only this time, that water has already been tainted by this thing. And then you continue to let more stuff pile into the cup and the water keeps pouring out onto the people around you and it keeps getting more and more and more tainted. So that's why every single day, we have to look at our vision. Every single day, we have to look at our vision and decide, this is the woman I am going to be. This is how I am going to pour. Not only into myself, but onto others intentionally. It's an intentional pour. It has to be an intentional pour. Because whether we like it or not, people are gonna drink from this cup. People are gonna drink from this cup. And it is my responsibility as a woman, as a wife, as a mother, as a ministry leader, as a coach to make sure that what they are drinking is as pure as it can possibly be. This is the overflow. The overflow is not for you. It's for everybody else. Set your life up so that there is overflow. Set your life up. You are already enough. But set your life up so that you have the capacity, the full capacity to pure, to pour. And that starts with emptiness. That starts with emptiness. And I see so many things where, you know, it's like, um, follow these 10 steps to success and um, buy this program and do this thing. And in two weeks, you're going to change your life. And there are things that you can implement that will instantly shift your mind. Absolutely. There are teachings that you can listen to. There are podcasts, there are sermons, there are books that you can read. But your process is your process. And I know that you maybe have dealt with something for so long 
and it hurts so much that you just want it over and you want it over now but be careful of praying for a miracle when what you actually need is a process be careful of that I want to encourage you to get empty have the courage to get empty and have the courage to select only the best to fill you back up you get to choose and you get to decide what you will choose I hope this helps. Blessings on your journey. I'll talk to you soon.